let me ask you a question. And this, this question goes to the guys. I want you to be very honest. Have you ever seen a lady in the street and you have looked at the lady more than once? Just be honest. You saw the lady coming. When the lady passed by you, you turned back, you looked, you turned back again, and you keep staring. Have you done that? Or the ladies, have you seen a guy and you have looked at a guy in ways that you know you shouldn't have? Have you done that before? Well, my dear friend, that is called lust. Question is, how do I overcome lust as a Christian so that I would always have the Spirit of God living in me? That's what we are going to talk about today in the truth that set free. Welcome back, my dear friend. My name is Pastor Isaac Apu, and I'm so excited to be with you once again on this station, you know, as we talk about the Word of God and how it relates to our daily life and how we can live lives that will bring glory to the name of God. The program is The Truth That Set Free. I want you to know that if you are here on Hope TV, I want you to know that we are here every Sunday, same time, so be sure to join us, and you will always be blessed with the truth that set free. And please... If you're watching this on YouTube, our YouTube channel, click on the subscribe button and press the bell icon. In that way, anytime that we post a content, you will be the first to be notified. And I want you to know that every single day we share a short, a five-minute devotional message on YouTube and other important messages that will keep you connected to God even as you prepare for your soon coming. So please press the you know, subscribe button right now and click on the bell icon and you will be part of the Voice of Hope Media Ministries. All right, so today we are talking about lust. Mm, something that people don't want you to talk about. One of the things that has become part of our lives, lust. We lust after everything. And young men today, young women today, lust after the opposite sex every day. We see people in the street and we look at them in ways that we shouldn't look, especially Men are always caught looking at the behind of women. We lust after people. How do I overcome that as a Christian? You see, we are living in a time where it, is, it has become practically impossible to escape, you know, sensuality. Almost everything today is promoted with a beautiful half-naked woman and has become a problem to a lot of Christian men. I had a chat with one young man. He said, Pastor, if they should take away sex and fornication, I think I'm a saint. Because a lot of people think that it has become very difficult to escape the realities that we live in today. So as a Christian, how do I, go, how do, I do it? How do I overcome lust? In a time where sex is everywhere, on the television, in our movies, even the songs that we listen to, on the music videos we watch, everywhere. You walk in the street and you see women dressed seductively and you are always tempted to look at it again. You know, these days, a lot of men even have accident, vehicle accident, because as they were driving, there was a woman passing and before they knew it, they've crashed their cars. How do I overcome lust? And when I'm talking about lust, I'm not just talking about lusting after women or lusting after men, but lusting after things that are not yours. Lasting after cars, lasting after phones, after mobile phones, after money. Anything that we last after is something that God wants us to deal with before he can fill our heart with his presence. So how do I do it? Dear friend, this is a very, very important subject because we are living in a time where, you know, society is saying that everything that we see around is calling for our attention. And even, though we, even when we don't have them, we don't have the means to get them. We want to have it by all means. So we last after these things. How do I overcome it? This is what we are talking about. By the way, before we start, I want us to first of all look at the meaning of the word last. What is last? According to Wikipedia, last is a psychological force producing intense desire for an object 
or circumstance while already having a significant other or amount of the desired object. And so lust can, can take you know, any form such as you know, the lust for sensuality, lust for money, lust for love, or lust for power. You want to be in power by all means, so you do everything to get in power. Lust is driven by the desire for sexual gratification. That is another definition. The desire to have sexual gratification. You lust after things. You lust after women. Now, according to the Baker's Biblical Dictionary, it defines lust as this. It says, lust is a strong craving or desire, often of a sexual nature. This is, this is lust. When we lust after women or men, when we, we want to have somebody by all means, somebody who does not belong to us by all means, that, my dear friend, is lust. Lust is something that as Christians we ought to deal with. Lust, you know, in the Greek language is a desire or a craving or a longing for what is forbidden. This is one definition I really want us to understand. When you try to have something that does not belong to you, by all means, you, try, you, you, you go about doing everything to have it when it is not for you. That, my dear friend, is lust. Okay? You know, we are living in a time where ladies and even men are moving towards a, a stage in, in our society where our dressing is like that we need to show more skin. So we should wear short skirts. Men would wear and show their boxes, show their chest, show, you know, part of the body that is, you know, sexual in nature or that suggests things like that. And that makes it so easy to last after, you know, people today, both men and women. And so we need to watch out as Christians. Now, finally, lust is also defined as sinful longing, the inward sin which leads to the falling away from God. In fact, people even believe and conclude that lust is the root of all sin. Because once you begin to imagine having it in your mind, then you automatically will do something to have it. The Bible in James chapter 1 verse 14 says, But every man is tempted when he is drawn away of his own lust and enticed. When you are drawn by your own lust, you are tempted and you will be enticed to it. Colossians chapter 3 verse 5 says, Put to death therefore what is earthly in you, sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. We need to put to death any of these things. If you have any feeling in you, any desire, any craving to have something or someone that is not, you know, yours, that feeling must be put to death. Because that will lead you to sin against the Most High God. Now, before we look at how to overcome lust, I want us to first of all look at the signs of lust. How do I know that I'm lusting after something or somebody? Number one, you are always thinking about looks and body. And so for this, I just want to narrow it down to lusting after, you know, men or women. When you are always concerned about how the person looks. And, and by the way, my dear friend, especially if you are not married or whether you are married and you are in a relationship and you are always, you know, thinking about a person's naked body. Always imagine how they will look like in bed. That, my dear friend, is lust. And if you are in a relationship that is leading to marriage, and that is how you constantly feel, I want you to know that you are not in love, you are in lust. And that would be disastrous when you finally end up in marriage. Number two, you always think about having sex with a person. That is a sign of lust. You don't love the person. Look, if you, are in, if you are in a relationship with somebody and you are about to marry and you are always thinking about sex, you are not in love. Once you have that sex, you will realize that the person is not meant for you. If you are married and then you, there is this lady friend of yours and there is this, or there is this male friend of yours who you are always picturing having sex with, you are committing sin against God. That is called idolatry according to the word of God. Number three. You don't even see the person's flaws anymore. And this goes to those who are not married, especially young people. 
You think you are so much in love. You don't even see the person's mistakes. You don't recognize them. There is this strong, you know, passion for the person. That is not called love. That is lust. It would disappear immediately you have sex with that person. And that is something as Christians, we must be able to overcome if you want to make it to heaven. Number four, you spend hours looking at the person's picture. You go through their status on WhatsApp. You look at every picture they post. Go onto their Facebook. Look at their pictures more than 10 times a day. When you are not doing anything, you still look at their pictures. You, you, you zoom into various parts of their body just to see how it would appear underneath the clothes. That, my dear friend, if you are doing that, it's last. And finally, always picturing the person naked in your mind. That is a strong sign that you are lasting after somebody. And that is something that if you were a child of God, it should never be part of your life. But does lasting after someone without the actual act sinful? Yes, my dear friend, it is sinful. Jesus Christ in Matthew chapter 5, verse 28 says this, But I tell you that anyone who looks at a woman lustfully has already committed adultery with her in his heart. This is so serious. There are a lot of men, married Christian men, who lust after other women. A lot of marriages have been broken spiritually through lust. Some people even unfortunately, whilst having an affair with their spouses, would picture other women, would picture other men in their mind in order for them to enjoy the sexual act with their husbands or with their wives. That is called adultery according to Jesus Christ. And that is a sin. It's so serious. So if you don't deal with it, it will destroy your relationship with God. When you are not married and you are always looking at naked women and then getting sexually aroused, that is sin against God. We need to deal with the issue of lust. Lust is a secret sin. Nobody sees it. You will be pictured or you'll be seen by everybody as a righteous person. But inwardly, you'll be lusting after women in your school, in your, in your church, in your community, in your mind, secretly. It is a sin nobody sees unless it is committed physically. But we need to deal with it because God lives in our heart. So how do I overcome it? Now, before we look at how we can overcome it, there are three things I want us to understand. Number one, you must always recognize that God has made us, both men and women, he has made us to notice what is beautiful. This is extremely important. God made you and I in such a way that when you see what is wonderful, what is nice, you recognize it. So when a man sees a beautiful woman, it is automatic. He will know that this is a beautiful woman. When a, a woman sees a handsome man, she would notice it. That is how God made us. So when you notice this happening, my dear friend, don't try to suppress it or pretend that it is not there. You must admit it. Because when you suppress it, you are not solving the problem. But you must acknowledge that the woman or the man that you are seeing is not the goal, but merely the shadow of our heart but merely the shadow of who our hearts are really looking for. If your heart is looking to have sex, then you'll be pictured that beautiful woman naked. So it is an issue with your heart. You always see beautiful things. And you see beautiful women, beautiful men, or handsome men. That is what you must understand, how God created us. Number two, number two you must realize that we are made in the image of God, men and women. And we are meant to love each other. In fact, men are to love women as Christ loved the church. Women are to submit in love to men as, you know, God wants us to be. These are higher calling. As human beings, we are meant to give love to each other, not to take it from people by force. So when you are always lasting after people, you are taking it by force. God made us to love. It's natural. Finally, you must realize that lust is not always bad. This is very important. I need to explain. Lust is not always bad. You see, sexual desire is an important part of, 
you know, human relationship. And when I say human relationship, let me be clear. I'm talking about the relationship between a man and a woman who are properly married to each other. It is so wonderful, you know. It is necessary to achieve intimacy, you know, that God wants us to enjoy in marriage. So there is absolutely nothing wrong with feeling or expressing sexual desires. In our culture, when a woman feels for sex and she expresses it, people think that she's, let me, in quotes, a show or she's a sports girl. No. When a married woman feels for sex, she must be able to express it. When a married man feels for sex, he must be able to express it. So when you are in love, so much in love with your husband or wife, and you lust after them sexually, that is within the confines of your marriage. That is not a problem. However, when uncontained desire of the flesh or care because we want something that is not ours. We want a woman who is not ours. We want a man who is not ours. That is called lasting. And that is what we need to deal with. But when you have sexual feelings for your wife or for your husband, it is not, there is nothing wrong with that. But when you have sexual feelings for your girlfriend or your boyfriend, remember your girlfriend is not yours because you have not properly married her. So when you have sexual feelings towards her, that is a sinful desire and it is lust. You must deal with it or get away from that relationship so that you will have your relationship with God restored. Now with that understanding, let us look at how we can overcome it. And I want to share with you a few strategies that would enable us to overcome lust in our lives. Strategy number one, understand that lust is a sin. This is important. Before you can deal with any problem in your life as a Christian, you must be able to put that problem in its right perspective. If it is sinful, then you know how to approach it and deal with it. If it's not sinful, then you also know how to deal with it. So the first step in beating or in overcoming lust is to understand that it is wrong according to the word of God. So many Christians are always, you know, tempted to justify lust. They say that lust is a lesson. Some people even feel like it's okay to lust after them or lust after women or men so far as you are not doing a physical act with them. That is not what the Bible teaches. In Matthew chapter 5, verse 27 to 28, Jesus Christ teaches us that anyone who looks at another person lustfully has committed adultery with them in the heart. God is concerned about the state of our heart. If your heart is full of lust, God's spirit cannot dwell in there. And remember, every sin comes from here. Out of the issue, out of the heart comes the issues of life. In other words, Jesus Christ our Lord put it this way: looking with lust and having sex with someone other than your spouse are all sinful. So when you have sex with somebody you are not married to and you will lust after someone you are not married to, they are all sexual sins that the Bible condemns. And so if that is how God sees it, then as Christians, we must also approach it with that same understanding that when I do such a thing, I am disgracing God. You must find every way possible as a child of God to deal with it. And that's what we are talking about. So always have it at the back of your mind that whenever you lust, you have sinned against God. You know, some people even don't pray about it. They go about throughout the day lasting after people in their, in their, in their workplace, lasting after, people in, lasting after people in their schools. They last after people they see around, especially men. And they don't pray about it. They don't even ask God to forgive them. Why? Because they do not recognize that it is a sinful act. Now you know the truth. Jesus says you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. Strategy number two, remove the temptation. This is very, very important. Once you recognize that lasting is sin, then the second thing that you ought to do, very, very important, is to remove what is fueling your lust. Lust can be fueled by what we put in our mind. In other words, the things that I consume would fuel my lust. 
It would either increase it or decrease it. When I'm spending more time looking at the word of God, when I'm spending more time helping people in need, when I'm spending more time praying, then lust would begin to die in me. But when you spend more time watching movies that are sexually explicit, listening to music and watching music videos with half-naked women, watching pornography, watching sexually charged images, then understand that you are always going to have a problem with lust. These are things that as a child of God, you need to remove. You need to get rid of any form of pornography in your life. You need to get rid of bad movies. You know, there are movies that a child of God shouldn't watch. I don't care what it is. There are movies that contain sexually charged materials that will always set your mind on things of that sort. You need to get rid of them. You need to get rid of bad and explicit music videos. Some of these hip-hop music videos, hip-hop music videos, where you see naked women dancing and shaking their behind. You need to get them off from your life. Because the more you watch this, the more you want to watch more. You know, the body, when it comes to issues of sex, releasing certain chemicals that are addictive. That's why people who watch pornography are addicted. The more you watch it, the more the chemicals are released. And the more they are released, the more you become addicted to it. So get rid of them. Get rid of them totally. Again, avoid long phone chat with the opposite sex. It can be your boyfriend or your girlfriend. Make sure that you understand how you go about with your relationship as a Christian young woman or a Christian young man. Even if you are married and there is this female friend or this male friend, you need to be very careful how you spend time with them on the phone. Because intimacy is sometimes developed through communication. Yes, it's developed through communication. When you're on the phone talking to the person at night, after 10 minutes, Whenever, whatever you are talking about, you're probably going to end it. And you begin to talk about each other. Before you know it, your talk shifts to other unnecessary things. And you'll be talking about things that will begin to arouse you sexually. You need to avoid that. This is very, very important. Avoid long hours behind social media. Social media these days, unfortunately, is gradually turning into something else. We are just praying and hoping that the companies that will praise this powerful giant social media, you know, you know, firms would filter it more so that things that are sexually explicit will not be found there. But when you go on TikTok, you look at the people's status on WhatsApp, you go on Facebook and all these social media outlets, you see pictures and things that are sexually explicit. Don't spend so much time there, child of God. Otherwise, you will be caught up. If you want to learn how you can overcome this, you know, there, I have a message on um, five traps that is lurking on social media you want to check out on YouTube right now. So just go to our channel on YouTube, Voice of Home Media, and then look for that message. It will really help you to know how to escape the webs and deceptions on social media. So avoid long hours on social media. Avoid the second look. This is the third thing you need to avoid. Avoid the second look. What do I mean by second look? You see the lady, you look at her once, then you look at her again. Avoid the second look. The second look is always the bad one. So don't be caught up always looking at the behind of women. Don't be caught up always picturing men in your mind as if they are sex machines. Don't do that and God will fill you with the spirit. Number three, break the trance. What do I mean by break the trance? You see, whenever lustful, you know, feelings begin to arise in your mind, whenever your mind begins to wonder about that lady you met at the other day, whenever your mind begins to wonder about that man, about this thing that is not yours and stuff like that, you need to break it. How do I do it? Get out from where you are immediately. Change what you are doing. The the, the, the reason may be that the reason why it could be that the reason why you are all of a sudden lasting is because you are in a conducive state of mind at that moment. So break the trance. Break it. Just get out from where you are. Change the activity you are doing 
and then get out and then let your mind refocus to what is pure and what is holy. Okay, you need to always break the trance, otherwise, you would always be caught up. Colossians chapter 3, verse 5 says, Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. You need to break them off and so break the trance. Okay, this is so simple. Whenever the things start happening in your mind, you begin to picture naked women or you begin to picture things that are sexual. Stop what you are doing, change that situation that you find yourself and then do something different and you'll be able to overcome. Number four, and this is very, very important, pray continuously. Pray continuously. The Word of God instructs us to take our thoughts captives. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 says that, and the best way we can take our thoughts captives, my dear friend, is when we pray all the time. And it's impossible for lust to survive when you are always praying. Pray all the time. Practice what is known as the presence of God. It means you pray almost every minute in your life. In every situation you find yourself, you are praying. When you are meeting somebody, you are praying in your mind for the person. When you are having conversation with somebody, you are praying in your mind. Every time you are praying, you are practicing the presence of God. In so doing, you are aware of the presence of God. And so you know the temptations that are lurking around the world. And you will be able to overcome lust. Understand always that the person who is hurt whenever you lust is God. So don't break the heart of God. And the prayer that we pray every day, would usher us into the presence of the Most High God and we'll be able to deal with lust. A Christian who doesn't pray would always find him or herself lasting after things and after people. But when you pray all the time, you'll be given the power. In Acts chapter 1 verse 8, God's word says that you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit shall come upon you. Pray for the Holy Spirit and he'll give you the power to overcome. Number five, be aware of boredom and stress. This is extremely important and this is the final point. Be aware of boredom and stress. You see, what I've come to realize is that people who are bored tend to spend more time scrolling the pages of social media. You see them on all the social media outlets, they will just be scrolling. They are bored, they have nothing to do. Always make sure you're occupied. Now, there is a famous saying that the devil finds work for the idle hand. Always make sure there is something productive that you are doing. When you realize you have nothing to do at that particular moment, take the Bible and begin to study it. Begin to write messages that you can post on social media. When you have nothing to do, engage in something profitable. Otherwise, the next thing you realize is that you are scrolling on social media and the next thing is you are lasting after things that do not belong to you. And I say, these days, people live false life on social media. They snap pictures and edit them in such a way that they are living the best of their lives, but they don't have anything. You are always tempted to last after people like that, last after their so-called fame, last after the things that they have achieved. You don't need to do that. Be productive in your life. Remember what happened to King David. The Bible says that when men had gone to war, David was all alone in the house. And when he was bored, he was just walking on top of his house and he saw a beautiful lady naked in her bathroom. And David ended up sleeping with this woman and conniving to kill his hus I mean, her husband. Boredom always leads to sin. Break it and get yourself productive and you will be able to deal with it. My dear friend, this is the truth. If we follow these five simple strategies, you are on the way of overcoming lust in your life. Remember what Jesus Christ says, if you lust after someone, you have committed adultery in your heart. We are living a very serious time in the history of the world. Everything is about sex. Everywhere you go, sex is now seen, seen to be normal. Now some Christians even believe that when you sleep with somebody you are not married to, it is okay. There is nothing wrong with it so far as you marry the person. Sin has been crowned. As Christians, we need to understand the purpose of God in our lives and avoid sin at all costs. Today, God says, break 
last in your life and he will fill you with his spirit. May God bless you so much. If this message has been helpful to you, please share it with somebody. Click on the subscribe button and then join us so that every week when we post a message, you will be notified. Remember, we are also on Hope TV every Sunday at 7 a.m. So make sure you join us and you'll be blessed with the truth that sets free. Until we meet again, remember, the truth is what will set you free. Shalom.